Okay, thank you for your blessings in our life. Thank you for the cross, Lord, that we can come to you and that uh, we have faith, that we have the grace from you, Lord, to uh, in, in power of resurrection, the truth. We just ask you for a uh, blessing of this class, the wisdom that we're going to gain from it, Lord, and we thank you for all the work that Jim and his wife put through this. Thank you for these things. Amen. 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 Well, <clears throat> Second Samuel, the second chapter. I'm not going to go and read every verse in these chapters, by the way. I want to get on over and, and uh, we're going to study the different, the, the kingdom splits here. We've got the split of the kingdom and then we've got a, the, the kingdom is divided. We have Saul as uh, the king of Israel and uh, God always had a plan for Israel to have a king, didn't they? Alright, a lot of people don't realize that. How many of you, it's the first time you ever heard that? Saul... God always planned for Israel to have a king. And the Messiah would be a descendant of the first or the first real king of Israel. Okay? The one God wanted. And who was going to be the king of Israel that God wanted and God anointed beforehand? David. David. Alright? But they wanted a king and they asked for Saul. And Saul means what? One asked for. One asked for. Thank you very much, Brett. Eight plus today. All right. I know your son told you that, didn't he? He did. <laughs> well, I was just talking about this yesterday because um, I was explaining to him how the bloodline was important for Jesus because that proved to the, everyone that he was the real Messiah. He was the real Messiah. Yeah. Right. They knew who he was. Matthew, the first chapter, Luke, the third chapter, tell you. Matthew, the first chapter, is Joseph's lineage in the Bible. He was a descendant of David also. Matthew, the third chapter, is Mary's lineage. She goes back also. And she is also a descendant of David. Okay. Now, Matthew writes down the legal heir to the throne, which was Joseph. Luke writes down the physical heir that we actually have of the Messiah, his heir. Because Joseph wasn't his father, was he? But he was legally, Joseph should have been on the throne. But who was on the throne of Israel instead of Joseph? Oh, the Pharaoh? No. Not the Pharaoh. Israel. Oh, Israel? Yes. But we're talking about this period of time now. Right here. Okay. Right here. Just before the church. Brother Bill. Oh, uh, Jim, I might mention something that I think is important. Yes. But, uh, you taught it, but you don't say it as much anymore. We, the Gentiles, track our, our, our lineage through the blood, through the man. Jewish Jews, Israel tracks theirs to the women. Jews track their lineage through a woman. They do not track it through the man. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. American Indians track their lineage through the woman, the matriarch, not the patriarch. Yeah. Jews always go through the woman. Enoch, remember last week I said this last week, Enoch called the Messiah the seed of woman, or the son of woman. The seed of the woman or the son of woman. Not the son of man. But I thought the seed of the man was always through the man. The, 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 the sin's in the blood of the man, though, right? Yeah. The sin is in the blood of the man, but the Messiah was coming through the woman, not the man. You, if you're a Jew, a Jew boy can marry a Gentile girl, and their children are not considered Jews. Yeah. They're not considered Jews. They're not considered Jews. Their mom has to be Jew, right? The mother has to be Jew. A woman, a, a, a Jew girl can marry a, a Gentile, and their children will be Jews. See, that's considered because of the Messiah, because of the daughter. All right. That's the reason people now let's get back to my question. <laughs> All right. Who was on the throne of Israel instead? Who was on the throne of Israel? Who was on the throne of Israel when Jesus came on the scene? Herod. Herod. Thank you. Herod was a descendant of who? Uh, I knew this one. I can't remember. Esau. You should have been here last. Uh, Wednesday night. I, had chemistry. I know you had chemistry, but that one, you've got to listen to that sermon. I'll tell you about that one, about Esau and, and Jacob. Okay. Jacob was the heir, wasn't he? Jacob is called Israel. All right? Not Esau. But Esau's descendant was on the throne. He was Herod. They fought their way to the throne of Israel through the Roman Empire. Okay. Well, so we have Matthew and we have Luke. We see that, and we're jumping ahead right here. Now, let's go back now. This is the foundation of this. Where we are right now in the Bible is extreme foundation of the Scriptures and of the king and of the heirship of David's line, okay? Which will become the Messiah. 
Now in uh, in 2 Samuel 2 and verse 1, it came about afterwards that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the city of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. So David said, Where shall I go up? And he said, To what? Where? Hebrew. What's in Hebrew? What's in Hebrew? Whose descendants had Hebrew? Um, Come on now. When they went into the land of Israel, who wanted who who wanted Hebrew? Cain's Cain's the land through that line. No, Cain, but I'm trying no. to think. Who was going to get Hebron? When he went in, that was the land of giants. Yeah, yeah, remember, remember it was but who wanted it? Who was the guy that went in that Caleb, wasn't afraid? Caleb and, Caleb and Joshua. Joshua. This is Caleb's descendants. Yeah, but I meant the, the, the giants. The giants were in this land. Yeah, the giants but they're were, the ones that came down through Cain, right? No. Cain's descendants are wiped out in the flood. You have to remember that. That's before the flood. Cain's all oh, okay. Cain's descendants then, then, are right yeah, 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 Now yeah, the Canaan, yeah. the son, the grandson of Noah is Canaan. Yeah. And these were the Canaanites. Yeah, but then the Canaanites messed around and they had some Nephilim in them. That's what the giants. Yeah. There we have a, a Goliath and his four brothers, or four sons, one or the other. We don't know whether they're four brothers or four sons, but there were five of them. That's why David picked up how many stones? Five. Five stones to kill all of them. Right? We find out that they were finally all killed and there were some great big dudes there. I'm telling you. All right. They were going to go to Hebron. So David was going to be king in Hebron. And this is where Caleb's descendants were. And this is where the giants were. Yeah. All right. So David took over Caleb's territory. Yeah. All right. This all makes sense when you look at it real with a, a magnifying glass. Okay. All right. So David went up there and his two wives and... Ahinoam and the Jezreelites and Abigail, the widow of Nabal. Remember Nabal, the Carmelite? Alright. Remember her husband was a descendant of who? Samuel. Caleb. Samuel. And he was a rat. But he was a descendant of Caleb. So he's going up to uh, 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 Abigail, Nabal's widow's country. This is where they live. Alright. And David brought up his men who were with him, and each one his household, and they lived in the cities of Hebron. Now Hebron is where, what else is there in Hebron? Very important place, biblically. This is a piece of property that we have foundation, a deed from, old, the oldest deed known to man. The bones of Jacob, or Abraham. <coughs> this this Abraham. is where Abraham bought this area, all right, for a grave. Yeah. And he bought all this, and we have a, a deeded the plate in the Bible. In the book of Genesis is where he did this, they uh, built. Wasn't, wasn't when David dwelt in Hebron, now correct me if I'm wrong, but, but wasn't that because the Hebrews were not friendly with the Israelites, uh, with, with, uh, with uh, you know, the well, one under, get to under, that under, just under uh, Saul, so... Yep. So that was like a sanctuary for him because they were they were enemies. Yeah, well, we're going to get to that in just a minute. Oh, am I getting we're, get, we're getting we're getting there. We're, okay. we're getting there right now. Okay. And the men of Judah, the men of Judah. Now, this is the lion of the tribe of Judah, isn't it? The lion of the tribe of Judah is where the the Messiah will come. Okay. The Messiah is going to come from the lion of the, of the tribe of Judah, and we know this from the blessing that Jacob gave to his sons in the book of Genesis. That a, a, law, a, a lawgiver would not cease to be from the feet between the knees of Judah until the Messiah comes. Okay? That was a prophecy. And then we know that God's promise to uh, David's lineage and his children was an, what we call an unconditional covenant. It could not be broken. It was on, stood standing on God's shoulders only. So let's go on down. And then uh, they told David, saying, it said, the men of Judah came, and they anointed David king over all the house of Judah. What chapter are you on? I'm in the second chapter of 2 Samuel, and verse 4. Okay? <clears throat> I'm going to be kind of, I'm not going to read every verse here. Okay. And they told David, saying, is it the men of Jabesh Gilead who buried Saul? Now this is where the cave of Machpelah is. This is where Abraham's tomb is. This is very holy ground to the Jews. Okay? Then he sent some messengers. 
We go on down to verse 7. Now therefore let your hands be strong and be valiant, for Saul your Lord is dead, and the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. Alright? And then in the, the verse number 8, we have Ishbosheth. Alright? Ishbosheth. Now how many of you know who these people are related to? Alright? Ishbosheth. What's Ishbosheth mean? Now just think, these are Saul's sons. Okay. So one in charge, I don't know. These, no. Man of shame. Man of shame. Man of shame. That's what he's meant. Can you imagine naming your child man of shame? But this is what, now you're going to find out another one later on. These are Saul's relatives now. <coughs> Ishbosheth made king over Israel. So now, when Saul died, Saul is dead, so now Israel is split. We got Saul, we got Ishbosheth here, okay? And then down here we got David. And David is over Judah, alright? And Ishbosheth, Saul's descendant, is over Israel. They call themselves Israel, alright? Now we have the split, the divided kingdom. Okay. One goes north and one goes south. Yes. Okay. This is this is south. All right. But then there's the, the Messiah is supposed to come through the opposite. The Judah. The south not in the right place for him to come through, is he? Yeah, let's go on now. Let's get on a little further, sir. Right, let's <laughs> get on a little further. Let me get there, yeah, okay? Bill, let, let me get there, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bill. <laughs> okay. And Abner, the son of Ner, of Saul's army, had taken Ishbosheth. The son of Saul. Alright? Now we're going to find out that Abner is a relative to Saul. Here we have one of the... We have another. Abner is related to Saul. Okay? Ner, Abner, the son of Ner, commander of Saul's armor, had taken Ishbosheth, the son of Saul. These are all relatives now. Bunch of, like a bunch of Indian tribes, see? And brought him over to Mahanaim, and made him king over Gilead and the Asherites, and over Jezreel and Ephraim, and over Benjamin, and over all of Ju Israel. And Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was 40 years old. Look how many times the word 40, the 40 years is in the Bible. You just go back and look. This is all over. And Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was 40 years old when he became king over Israel, and he was king for two years, and the, and the house of Judah, however, followed David. Okay, so now we have a divided kingdom. We have God, first of all, there is going to be a king in Israel. He, he decides that in his own. This is his own, uh, what we call his own will. This is his uh, uh, own plan. God's plan of the ages. Okay? And the time that David was king over his Hebron, over the house of Judah, was seven years and six months. Now let's go on down a little bit further. Now we have another guy that comes on the scene. Now Abner was the son of Ur and went out from Mahanaim to Gibeon, and the servants of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and Joab, the son of Uriah, and the servants of David. Now who is Joab? Who's Joab? That's David's nephew. Joab is David's nephew now. Okay? Just remember that. Joab is David's nephew. Now, all this is good to be... You, you read Shadow of the Indian Star about my family and all the things, all the fighting that they've done between them and everything else? This is, this is just like that right here. This is, we, we have a war. All right? Son of Zariah and the servants of David went out to meet them by the pool of Gibeon, and they sat down one side, one on one side, and one on the other side, and Abner said to Joab, Now we have a descendant of, of Saul here, now saying, a, reading, meeting and, and conferring with Abner. Abner is conferring with Joab, and Joab is David's half nephew, if you want to really call that. It's his nephew, if you're a nephew, or nephew, or your half nephew or not, from his half-sister, okay? 
Now I'll let the young men rise and hold a contest before us. This is a pretty bloody contest here now. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And Joab said, let them arise. Now remember what happened when the, when the Goliath came against Israel? Remember what happened when the Goliath came against Israel? What happened there? Remember, anybody remember? Oh, they got scared and left. No, no, no. He got up and made a challenge. He said, let our champion take on your champion. Now just think about this for a while. Yeah, because they knew this. Let our yeah. champion, Goliath, and his four brothers take on your champions. Now they had they had an ace in the hole, so to speak, didn't they? They had this guy nine foot four inches tall, and he had four brothers behind him. And now here, guess who Israel sends out? A little boy. <laughs> a shepherd with a stick with a rod and a staff. The rod to beat him up with and the staff to hook him and drag him. That's what the rod and the staff was. And a sling. Alright? That was a contest. That was a, that was a contest of the champions. This is when you have <coughs> Geronimo was a, uh, an Apache. And a lot of times he would challenge other tribes, and they send, send your best man out. And that happened among the, the Indian tribes. The chiefs, you know how you got to be a chief? Because you were extremely brave. You were a champion. All those headdresses that they had, remember those great big headdresses, the flowing headdresses like Quanah Parker had, and, and the setting bull and all those, you know how they got those feathers? Every one of those feathers represented a feat of a life and death situation. So if they had 40 or 50 feathers in her hat or a hundred, that meant a hundred times that he put his life on the line and he did something extremely brave. So now these are two champions. When they would, when the Indians would go out, they could see the great chiefs had these big headdresses on. Now these guys had done something with their lives. Okay, these guys were, were... Have you ever heard of the guy, Man Afraid of His Horses? The Indian, that was one of my relatives, Man Afraid of His Horses. Now let's just think about that for a man afraid of his horses. What kind of a guy does that sound like? A guy that was afraid of horses, huh? But his name really meant, that was a bad translation, man who when the enemy sees him and they just see his horses decorated and painted with his insignia on it, they're afraid. Before they ever see him, they're afraid just seeing these horses out there lined up that he's going to ride in the back. They're afraid of his horses, let alone him. Now, these were champions. So David takes his champions, and Abner takes his champions. All right, so we have Joab's champions, we have Abner's champions. Now, the champions are going to meet. We've got a, a contest of champions here. Let's see what happens. Number 15, and they rose up and went by the count, over by count, 12 for Benjamin and Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and 12 for the servants of David, which was Joab, which was David's nephew. All right, we got to remember, this is all a family affair. Okay? And what happens here? What happens here? What's going on over here, Brother Dr. John? Read number 16. And each one grasped his opponent by the head and thrust his sword into the opponent's side, so they fell down together. Therefore, that place was called the Field of Sharp Swords, which is... In Gibeon. All right, that that that's his name. Hel Ka Hazarim means the place of sharp swords. All right, it is Hel Ka Hazarim. Okay, the place of sharp swords because these people died, which is in Gibeon. And that day the battle was very severe, and Abner and the men of Israel were beaten before the servants of David. So the champions, whose champions won? Yes. How many of you ever realized what was going on here before? You ever realized what was going on here? This is a, this is a war of champions. Hmm. These are the chiefs that are fighting. These are the best men. These are the champions. These are the Olympic champions, so to speak. Number 18, and the three sons of 
the Ruah were there, Joab and Abishai and Asael, and Asael was as swift-footed as the gazelles of the field. Asael, he was fast. He was a fast runner. And Asael pursued Abner. All right, now, who is Asael? Who is Asael? Anybody know? This is Joab's brother, which is David's nephew. Write that down. This is important. This is a family fight. This is jo Joab's brother, and this was also David's nephew. It's Asael. Asael. Okay? And he pursued Abner, and did not turn to the right or to the left following Abner. Now, they're running off. Abner's probably riding a horse or driving a chariot, but this guy, Asael, keeps on following him. And what happens? Then Abner looked behind him and said, Is this you, Asahel? And he answered, It is I, David's nephew. So Abner said to him, Turn to your right or to your left and take hold of one of the young men for yourself and take for yourself his spoil. But Asahel was not willing to turn aside from following him. He was after Abner. Now remember, this is, this is a guy right off the chip of the old block. Just like David. Okay? And just like Joab. And Abner repeated again to Asiel, Turn aside from following me. Why should I strike to you to the ground? How then could I lift up my face to your who? Brother. Brother Joab. And your uncle David. Mm. But down there, your uncle David. All right? Mm. <coughs> This is, is, this, is, this, is this plot unfolding now, Brother Bill? Okay. This is where I wanted to get with you. And however, he refused to turn, and therefore an Abner struck him in the belly with the butt end of the spear. Now, what's the butt end of the spear? The wooden shaft. The wooden shaft. Now, Abner's a pretty strong man, I'm telling you. He's a very strong man. He's... Hit him in the belly with the butt end of the shaft so that the spear came out his back. He shoved that butt end, not the sharp end of the spear, but the butt end of that spear, he ran it completely through his body. Now that took a lot of force. Now, here we have two families fighting. We have Saul's family and David's family, and these are direct relatives. They're involved. The family is definitely involved in this war of champions. Okay? And he fell there and died on the spot. And it came about that all that came from the place where Ashel had fallen and died stood still. And Joab, who's Joab? That's his brother. And Abishai pursued Abner. These are David's nephews. And when the sun was going down, they came to the hill of Amah, which is in front of Giah, on by the wide way of the wilderness of Gibeon. And the sons of Benjamin gathered together. What does Benjamin mean? His right hand man. Son of the right hand. His right hand? Son of the right hand. Okay. All right. Benjamin gathered together behind Abner, and, be, and they became one band, and they stood on the top of a certain hill, and Abner called to Joab. Now, Abner, you know, Abner says, we've been whipped. Do you want to kill all of us? We've been whipped. Okay? And Abner called to Joab. Now this is Saul's descendant calls to Saul's relative calls to David's relative, his nephew. Shall the sword devour forever? Why are we keep why do we keep on fighting? Do you not know that it will be bitter and in the end, and how long you refrain from telling the people turn back from following your brothers. They're all brothers. They're all brothers. They're all relatives. Alright? Now, we know that Saul was what? Saul, what tribe was Saul from? Come on. Saul was a Benjamite okay. of the tribe of Benjamin. Was a Benjamite supposed to be on the throne? No. According to Israel, Jacob, who was going to be on the throne? Judah's descendant. Alright, so here we have this Saul. Saul's descendants, Benjamites. Now Saul in the New Testament. Saul in the New Testament. 
The Apostle Paul later is what his name was. Saul was of a tribe of what? Come on. Paul or Saul? Saul. The Apostle that was going to become Paul. Saul. What tribe was he from? Benjamin. Benjamin. He was a descendant of Saul. I still want the Levites, sorry. <coughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Saul, the apostle, was a descendant of Saul, of the tribe of Benjamin. Alright? And then God saved him, didn't he? And made him a great Christian. So both Saul's were both Saul's were Benjamin. They're Saul's related. One asked for. And then he named him Paul, which means small. Paul is small, Saul is asked for. All right. Let's go on now, 27. And Joab said, As God lives, if you had not spoken, surely then the people would have gone away in the morning, each from following his brother. So Joab blew the trumpet, and all the people halted and pursued Israel no longer, nor did they continue to fight. And Amner and his men went out through Arabah all night long. And verse 30, And Joab returned from falling to Abner. And when he had gathered all the people together, uh, 19 of David's servants besides Ashiel were missing. They were killed. Now I'm going to tell you something. Abner, I mean, Joab didn't know that Abner had killed his brother at this time. Mm. Did you know that? He didn't know that yet. <coughs> but the servants of David had struck down many of the Benjamites and Abner's men, so that 360 of them died. So how many of David's got, guys got killed? 19. 19. And they, were, they did quite a slaughter on the house of Saul, and there were 360 of them died. And they took up Ashiel and buried him in his father's tomb, which was in what? Bethlehem. This is where Jesus would be born later. All of this is extremely important. Okay? Then Joab and his men went all night long until they dawned in Hebron. Okay? <coughs> My voice is pushing me. Let's go on a little further. Now in chapter 3. We're going to get along a little bit further. And the house of David is strengthened. Now therefore was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. And David grew steadily stronger. And the house of Saul grew weak continually. And it goes on down. It talks about different things. And then we come over here and, and, and start with verse number 6. And it came about while there was war between the, the house of Saul and the house of David that Abner was making himself strong in the house of Saul. Now Abner is also a relative of the house of Saul. Now Saul had a concubine whose name was Rizpah, the daughter of Arah. Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you gone into my father's concubine? All right, now he was one of his ex-wives, basically. He, uh, a, a wife, a concubine, is a wife, by the way. What's the difference between a wife and a concubine? Anybody know? Married to one. So Solomon had how many? No. 700 wives and 300 concubines. Huh. Boy. But all of them were his wives. What's the difference between a concubine? Wait a minute. What's the difference between a concubine and a wife? She knows the answer. See, she took the teacher home. A concubine is just a live-in and, and a wife is somebody legally married to you. They're both legally married. Okay. Legally married means they've gone to bed together. That's God's term to being legally married. Okay, So they're both married. What's the difference between a concubine and a, a wife? They're both wives. Concubines didn't have any rights. To That's the story. The concubines' descendants <coughs> didn't have any rights. Abraham had a concubine called what? Hagar. Did that boy have any rights? Zilch. Zilch. All 
what's through here? We find they have wives and they have concubines. Concubines are wives. But they don't have any rights. Their children don't have any rights. Hmm. No heritage. No heritage. Or oh, thank you, Bill. You got an A plus for that. No, no, you probably about, learned it from Joanne. No, I was thinking about changing her from wife to concubines. You better straighten out, Bill. <laughs> Get in Remember, the lady goes to the woman, not the man. <laughs> Abner was very angry over the words of Ishbosheth. Now here he is. Abner's mad now. Now his and here's his relative. He's mad at his relative. So when relatives get mad at each other, what they do? They plan on assassinating somebody or whatever. Ishbosheth said, "I am a dog's head that belongs in Judah. Today I show kindness." to the house of Saul, your father, to your brothers, and to his, basically, even one of the relatives too, and to his friends, and have not delivered you into the hands of David, and yet today you charge me with a guilt of concerning a woman? This is just concubine. She had no rights anyway. She was nothing. She had no rights. It was his wife, all right, but she had no rights. May God do so to Abner and me also, if the Lord has sworn to David, I do not accomplish this for him. And to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul to establish the throne of David over Israel and over Judah from Dan to Beersheba. And he could no longer answer in Abner a word because he was afraid of him. So Abner sent messengers to David. Here Saul's descendant now, Abner. Now he is the, what we call the president the head of all the army of Saul, whose land and make your covenant with me, and behold, my hand shall be with you and to bring all Israel under you. So now the commander-in-chief, the commander-in-chief of Saul's army, Israel, says that we're going to go, I want to go to David now, and I want to be one of his joint commanders-in-chief because I want to help bring all of the tribes under David. That's God's will anyway. Wasn't it? Now let's look at this. <clears throat> and he said, Good, I will make a covenant with you and demand one thing of you, namely, surely, you shall not see my face until you first bring Michael, Saul's daughter, when you come to see me. Now he wants Michael. He is actually his wife. Now, Saul did David a lot of dirt, didn't he? His first woman that he had promised David when he killed Goliath, he gave to another man, didn't he? And then he gave him Michael. Why did he give him Michael? Do you remember why Saul gave David Michael? Because she was a witch. <laughs> she was a rat. She was hard to get along with and terrible. A witch. <laughs> what she was. I don't mean a real witch, but I mean one that would turn on you. One that would turn on you and hurt you and do you harm. That's a witch. That's the way he looked at it. All right? He says, I am going to give her Michael because she's a witch. She'll turn on him and she'll hurt him. In the end, she'll do this. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Give me my wife Michael, to whom I was betrothed for 300 foreskins of the Philistines. He went out and killed 300 men for this woman. And Ishmael sent back and took her from her husband, uh, Patael, the son of Laish. And this is about where we're going to stop now. We're just about finished here. But her husband went with her, weeping and bawling and squalling, all the way to Baharim. And Abner said to him, Go return. So he returned. So Abner had consulted with the elders. Now she's already living with somebody else. Mm -hmm. She had already betrayed her husband. And Saul knew that she would betray him because she was a witch. He knew what kind of temperament she I had. I thought they stoned women like that. We're going to find out what David does to her later. We'll find the rest of the story out. Now after had consulted with the elders of Israel, saying, In time past you were seeking for David to be over the king. Now then do it. Now here's the elders of Israel. This is on this side, Saul's side. Now after already has gone to work for David. Already. Okay? This is going to answer your story, Brother Bill, and and what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> I know who the real fucking brain is in that family. That's Joseph. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> now then, do it. For the Lord has spoken to David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I have saved my people from Israel from the hand of the Philistines and from the hand of all their enemies. And Abner also spoke in the hearing of Benjamin. 
And in addition, Abner went and spoke in the hearing of David in Hebron, and all seemed good to Israel and the whole house of Benjamin. Now everybody's happy. Now we've got one guy from Saul's camp over here with David's. Everything's going good. He's going in David's hands now. Then Abner and twenty with him came to David in Hebron, and David made a feast for Abner and men who were with him. David did this now. And Abner said to David, Let me arise and gather all Israel to my Lord. This is Abner now. The, this is the first chief of, of the whole army, what we call the, the chief. The, what is the president called here? The chief. The chief. This is the head man of the army. And the king, that they may uh, make a covenant with you, that you may be king over all your soul desires. So David sent Abner away, and he went away in peace. And behold, the servants of David, and Joab, circle Joab. Joab is David's nephew. Now who did Abner kill? Joab's brother. He ran the, the butt end of that, of that, of that, spear all the way through him. <clears throat> and Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he had gone in peace. <clears throat> when Joab and all the army that was with him arrived, they told Joab, saying, Abner the son of Ner came to the king, and he had sent him away, and he had gone in peace. We are at peace with this, this descendant of Saul, this Saul's family. Then Joab came to the king and said, What have you done? Behold, Abner came to you, and why then have you sent him away, and he is already gone? You know, Abner, the son of Ner, that he came to deceive you and to learn of your giving out and your commanding and going in and going out and find out all that you're doing. Joab is mad over his brother, and what is Joab going to see? Revenge. And now what happens? When Joab came out from David, he sent messengers from Abner, and they brought him back from the well of Sirah, and David did not know it. David is a man of his word. Okay? So Abner returned to Hebron, and Joab took a aside in the middle of the gate to speak with him privately, and he struck him in the belly so that he died on account of the blood of Ashel his brother. And afterward, David heard about this. I and my kingdom are innocent before the Lord forever, the blood of Abner the son of Ner, and may it fall on the head of Joab. And you can just put that down in your Bible because it does. Later, much later. And Joab and all of his house, father's house, and may there not fail from the house of Joab one who is discharged, who is a leper, or who takes hold of this staff for or falls by the sword, who lacks bread. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, killed Abner because he had put their brother Ashel to death in the battle of Gibeon. And then, in verse 31, we find out that David mourns over Abner. David is a man of his words. When David says something, he means it. That was what made him so great. Did you know that? That's what made him so great. He was a man of his word. In history, there have been some people like that that were men of the word. When David said he wasn't going to kill somebody, he didn't kill them. He was a man of his word. His word was his honor. And David was a man of honor at this point, at least, in his life. All right? And he was very upset with Joab, but we're going to find out what happens to Joab later. And Joab is who? David's nephew. Remember, this is all a family fight. All right? All of them are sons of Israel. All of them, sons of Jacob. But then we have Saul because Israel wanted a king. They didn't want to wait for David to grow up. God was going to give them David, but they wanted Saul. So now we have the kingdom divided. Every time that God wants something for you, and you try to go and do it your own way, what happens? You get in trouble, don't you? That ought to be a good example. We get in trouble. Brother Dave, it's yours. Thank you for enduring those hard seats. Did I answer your questions a little bit? We're going to get into it a little bit more. We're going, we're going through it a little quicker than what 
read and every verse. We're jumping. But we're going to jump some more, but we're going to give you the foundation of this. Yes. All right, Brother David. Yes. Yes. Jesus, what, what, what of the tribe, what was, there, what was his sign? Was it the lamb, the lion? Which, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Judas. Lion the of lion of the tribe of Judah. All right. The lion of the tribe of Judah. From the rejected wife of Jacob, remember? Okay, on our announcements today, we've got uh, a golf tournament coming up. <coughs> it is on uh, May 1st, Green Bay Golf. Where's it at? Let's see. 